The scientists tell us that this warming climate will eventually affect just about everything that grows on our part of the Earth, including the forest. Like the coast, the main forest has defined life in our state. We are the pine tree state, after all. And while the Maine woods has endured many cycles and centuries of weather, the warming climate, we are told, will change them. Even now, in Maine's third American century, we are still a state of woods, almost 90% forested. The Maine forests are the soul of Maine. It's the essence of Maine. It's our identity, and we need to keep that. Patty Cormier sees the forest through the trees. She's director of the Maine Forest Service. Like this. And here in her hometown of Farmington. This is a little uh, red oak here. Yeah. She gave us a warning. The warmer climate will change our woods. With climate change, you know, those species that are at the northern edge of their range, they're, they're going to oaks are gonna do good, they're gonna march in. And your sugar maple, red maple, birch are gonna kinda lose out in that equation. She says Maine is on the dividing line between the warmer temperate forest and the cooler northerly boreal forest. That mix, she says, has given us a great diversity of hardwood and softwood trees. But as things warm up, the boreal, cooler climate tree species will slowly retreat north. When we talk about a warming climate, it's natural to think about the air temperature or even the sea temperature. But for trees, it's about more than that. It's also about where their life support comes from, from the earth around their roots. The soils are getting hotter, which is creating stress on the trees that we're used to the soils having more moisture in them, so it stresses them out, and then these invasive insects come in. Insects, including the gypsy moth and brown tail caterpillar. But you see these, these maples here, and there's defoliation. And those insects are already hurting these trees, she says. Some of the defoliation from brown tail moth caterpillars they swarmed into Farmington and many other inland towns for the first time this year because of the early end to winter and a very dry spring. It's either a rock maple, a hard maple, bird's eye maple, um, sugar maple. All the same. All the same. And Maine's maple industry could become a climate victim for other reasons. At Russell Black's farm in Wilton, he says the maples are doing all right now, but has little doubt that may not last. Black taps about 1,500 trees to make syrup. It's one of our major sources of income. But it's become far less dependable because of how the warming climate is causing erratic weather. Warm spells, limited cold spells, um, you know, earlier we're, we're tapping trees a lot earlier than we did. He says they used to count on a string of warm days and below freezing nights to make the sap run. That dependability now seems gone. Short term, I, I don't think it's going to be as, you know, affect me as much as it's going to affect my children and my grandchildren. I, I believe that they're going to see um, uh, problems, you know, with the maple syrup industry. Forests don't change overnight, but Patty Cormier says that over time, even the famous North Woods will see the change, all affecting the forest economy. That's your boreal forest, and they're, they're kind of, it's, it's becoming too warm, they're retreating. And as we try to fight to slow down the warming climate, she says we need our forest more than ever. Maine is five million metric tons of carbon is emitted. Net emission is 1.2 million metric tons because of the forest. You know, we are so lucky, we have a jewel here. Which means the trees being stressed by the warmer soils, insects, and other factors are the same trees we need to slow down the warming trend. None of this will be quick, Patty Cormier says, but over the coming 50 years, perhaps, the Maine woods and all the things that depend on them will almost inevitably see the change. Still ahead.